Hey everybody, it's Steph from Destination Exploration and I'm here with another Technology Thursday post for our At Home with DE series. Today, we're gonna to be working with Scratch, which is a free program that you can use on the internet or download it to your PC or Mac computer. And it's a great way to get a nice introduction to coding. Today, which is April 30th, is also Hairstyle Appreciation Day. I know all of us have gone way too long without a fresh cut and I'm going a little stir crazy so I thought why not make a free hairstyle looks catalog on scratch so we can try out some new hairstyles um, and see what it would be look like when we get back to the barbershop or the hair salon. So we're going to give it a go, we're going to walk you through it. Hopefully I've got some cool hairstyles for you guys to download and then use and so we'll see what they look like on you. Let's see what we're working towards. I've got our my hair salon here. I'm ready to go. I'm all excited. I'm gonna jump on in. Oh my gosh, there I am. So I've got some fun hairstyles to check out. I got myself in front of a mirror, looks good. So let's try, we're gonna grab this one. Oh my gosh, what do I think? Looks pretty good. I mean, not my usual cut. Maybe we'll try something else. Mm, let's try, let's go long hair. Maybe some purple, you know, dyed a new color. You know, not too bad. What do you think? Nah, oh, let's just go. We're one step away from shaving my entire side of my head. So this is what I could look like. I don't think I'm gonna do it. <laughs> let's put that one back here. This one's more kind of my style. It's kind of where we're going if I let it so, you know, not too bad, a little fluffy, but that's okay. I think I'm gonna go with that one. Uh, looks great, now I'm on the runway, um, and that's it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to build that. I'm gonna show you how to get yourself in there. We're gonna show you the different hairstyles. I have more than just those six that you can choose from, um, and then we're gonna get going, and we'll start. Okay, to get started, we first need to go onto the Scratch website, or you need to download it to your computer and work off the app itself. So the website is scratch.mit.edu. Okay, it looks like this. There's a whole bunch of tutorials if you want to go through and try some out. There's a whole bunch of games. You can play Super Mario, you can play your favorite Geometry Dash, you can play Flappy Bird, you can do lots of other stuff, but we're gonna make our own. If you're on the website itself, you can press create and it pops open a new window, which will give you this workspace to work with here. These are some tutorials to get you started um, and you can just close them if you're not working on them. So instead of for me working on the internet, I'm actually gonna work on the app, which is gonna look, it looks exactly the same except I don't have to have the internet open. It means you can do it at any point in time. You don't have to be connected to the internet. You can do it um, kind of in the car if you have the stomach for that. But, and just to give you a lay of the land, if you've never used Scrap before or if you need a refresher, up at the top, we've got our tutorials, our file, our edit, all that good stuff. And then right in the middle of this blank space, this is our workspace. And our workspace may change depending on if we're on the code tab, the middle tab, which will allow us to customize our sprites or our backgrounds, or the sound tab, okay? So when I click on these, I can see that they change and the workspace in the middle changes to go along with it. Over on the right-hand side, we have this little tiny box, which is called our stage. It's where our, that's what our final product is gonna look like and that's where we can edit and move things around and that's what our animation is gonna look like. Down on, just below it, is this rectangular box which is for the sprite. And so a sprite is essentially an object that we can move and code and add different commands to to perform different functions. So that's what we're gonna be using, that's what the hair is, that's what our face is. Okay, and we can change the size and we can do lots of different things in there. The little tiny strip on the far right hand side is the stage and that's our backdrop. So that's like the background, it's going to stay the same mostly throughout um, your animation or your video. It can change between different pictures but it's not something that we can animate or move around. Okay? And then if we jump back to the middle to our workspace, we've got the code tab. And so just like when we did micro bits we have this block coding. And block coding, again, is a very easy way, user-friendly way to see 
and code for the very first time. And you can do lots of stuff even if you've been coding for a while. So all of these again are color coded. They've got the labels along the side that you can easily jump to. Okay, so we're gonna start off and unfortunately, I'm not a cat. I'm a human, so we don't need this sprite. And this sprite is always here that we can just get rid of it there. So once we've gotten rid of the cat, we're at a blank slate. We can do whatever we want. In our barbershop, we're going to, we need a background because if we just walked into a weight room, it would be very boring um, and it wouldn't be great for our animation. We wouldn't know where we were. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna make the three different stages or the backdrops that we can use going forward. So to make a new stage, we're gonna go and click the stage tab over here. We're gonna go down to the bottom. It's a little circle, it'll pop up. Choose a backdrop. We can either choose one that is already made for us. So there's lots of different ones to choose from. You can filter by clicking the buttons up at the top. Or what we can do is we can paint and make our own. You can have a surprise one or you can upload a backdrop. So a picture of your choosing. So today we're going to do, we're gonna upload the backdrop. There is a file that you can download off of the main activity page. And so the link to that is in the description below. But once you download that file, it's a zipped file or a compressed file that you can expand. If you can't figure it out, ask an adult, they should be able to help you out there. So once you've downloaded the file and you're working on it, you're going to locate it in your finder or your Windows viewer. Okay, it's usually in your downloads folder and you're gonna look for haircut pictures. And what we're gonna do is instead of hairstyles, we're gonna go right into stages. So I have four different options to choose from here. Um, I have a barber chair and a mirror and you can choose between one or the other. I'm gonna choose the mirror just cause it's a little simpler. So I'm gonna open it up and you see that I coming, I'm coming into my second tab here and I've got my, my backdrop. Now, the thing to notice, we have this blue button at the bottom where it says convert to vector. When we're working in graphics, we're working with an image, when it's a vector, it's something that's scalable, we can move it around and it comes in pieces and we can layer different images on top of each other. Okay, that's what we want to be working with always. So when it gets uploaded, it gets uploaded into a bitmap, which is basically just like one layer. It's like a canvas, whatever you draw on it, uh, it's stuck there. Um, so if I were to draw a line on it like this, um, I wouldn't be able to go in and erase it. I'd be erasing like the full picture. So you can see it disappearing over here. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna undo this and I wanna convert it to a vector. It just means that this now, it can't be erased. Um, it has to be a bitmap bitmap to be erased, but it means that I can move it around and I can scale it. So I can go to the corners and I can scale it up and down. So instead of making this the full screen, because then I can't see all of it and I can't, I don't have room for my, my fun hairstyles, I'm going to make it just half the, or just like three quarters of the screen like I had it in our demo. I'm going to make it a little bit skinnier than it was. Looks great, looks great. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that I leave some pieces over here to the side just so I can add in a square. So I've got my mirror, that looks great. Now I wanna add some fun things on top of it. So I can add text, I can change the color, I can do some erasers. But what I wanna do is I wanna grab this rectangle. I can see that the color is going to be purple. It's gonna have no outline, but so we'll give it a try. We'll draw a box like this. You can see that it's showing up onto our screen up at the top here. I can move it around and so we're gonna make it a little bit bigger so that it covers the full screen. Looks great. Now, your salon may have purple, but I'm gonna go with this neutral theme. And so in order to change the color of the box, all I have to do is click on the fill. Now I can use the sliders and I can do trial and error, but sometimes it's a little hard. So what I find I like to do is I click on the eyedropper and it means that I can pick up any color that's in my picture so far. So let's choose like a nice, brownish, maybe something a little lighter down here. And then what I can do from there is now I can go in and change kind of the saturation or the brightness to get the desired color that I want. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. It's like a nice wall where all my, my hairstyles are gonna hang out. I'm also going to put a little bit of text in there to help the user figure out what's going on. So I'm just gonna press the text, I'm going to 
click on our screen here and I'm gonna go choose your style. Okay. Now, again, this is the same color that we just had and let's make that maybe a darker brown so that it pops. And all I have to do is go over to the arrow, move it over here, I can scale it. I can, when I'm on the text button, I can actually change the font style. So I'm gonna choose marker and I'm gonna move it around. Looks good, looks good. I might make this one a little bit bigger so I've got some room to work with. So now I've got this, that looks like a pretty great background. I think I'm done. So instead of naming this mirror, I'm gonna name it Barbershop so that I know exactly what background it is. I can get rid of this first backdrop. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make the storefront. And this one's pretty simple because it's just one picture. So what we're gonna do is down at the bottom here are we can either go back here or we can go to the bottom and you can choose a backdrop We can upload a backdrop again. So I'm gonna do the same folder. I'm gonna do salon front, I'm gonna open it up. Remember, I'm gonna convert it to a vector and that means that I can scale it and make it bigger. And sometimes I just drag it out like this. Awesome, looks centered, looks great. Now I need my runway to start my brand new look. So we're gonna do one more. We're gonna upload, I'm gonna choose runway. You can choose one of the pre-existing ones. You can maybe go on the beach. You got a new wavy hairstyle. And again, convert it to a vector so that we can move it around. We'll make it really big. Maybe not that big. Awesome. All right, so now we've got our runway, we've got our storefront, and we've got the inside of our barbershop. Now that we have our backdrops, it's time to get into the sprites. So like I said, the sprite is an object or an image that we can manipulate and move around and give it different commands to do amazing things. So we're gonna jump back over to our code. We're in our stage area here, but we wanna jump over into our sprites. And to start off, we need the person getting a new haircut, which in this case is gonna be me, in your case is gonna be you. So we're gonna go into choose a sprite, just like we chose a background. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to upload a sprite. And for me, I've got this picture already ready to go. I look pretty funky. Looks like I just buzzed my hair, but I actually just erased the top half of my hair here. Um, but I've done this in a different program, I've done it in Photoshop, but I'm gonna show you how you can do it actually right in Scratch, which is a really simple way of doing so. So we're gonna be jumping in on, on my no hair picture um, and I can move it around. I wanna convert it to a vector. All right, so we've got it moving around, everything looks good. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna resize it because this head is quite large. And some of the hairstyles that I wanna make are also very large and I won't be able to fit in the screen. So we're just gonna make it a little bit smaller. Looks good, place it right in the middle, we're golden. So this is my head and it's gonna be like that forever but I'm gonna show you now how you can make it work for your computer or for your picture of yourself. To make yourself a sprite, all you have to do is, just like we uploaded an image before, we're actually gonna use the camera in your computer um, to do so. So you can either upload a picture that you take with your phone or with a camera that you have saved on your computer and still do all these um, effects, um, or you can use the built-in webcam that you've got already. So right at the bottom here, we're gonna go choose a costume. We're going to choose this time camera. And what's gonna happen is you can see, so I work on two screens, so this is me actually looking at the screen. This is me looking at my computer. Hello, everybody. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take a photo. So the key is, because we're adding hairstyles on, we wanna make sure that our head is as close to bald as we can get. So if you've got long hair, pull it back in a really tight ponytail. If you've got short hair, kind of pull it back as much as you can around your ears. Um, and what we'll do is we'll crop out the top so that you don't have any of that uh, volume um, going forward. So. For example, we're gonna take a picture like this. I'm gonna get kind of low. And we're gonna smile. This is gonna be our headshot. It's gonna take a picture. So now I've got, <laughs> so now I've got myself a picture. I can retake the photo or I can use this one. So I'm just gonna use this one for now to show you what's going on. So once we're in here, if we convert this to a vector, it means that I can move it around like this. When I have it as a bitmap, 
I can actually go in and erase the background. So I can zoom in and I can use this eraser tool to actually go in and delete the background. So what you're gonna do is essentially just go in and this may take a little while, uh, just go really slowly, takes a little bit of practice. Again, you can see that this brush is really, really big, which is great for like the outsides and getting rid of the main parts here and doing really fast movements. But the closer you get to your face, you're gonna be wanting, to, you're gonna wanna make this brush a little smaller. So if we go down to say 10, let's give that a go. So it's just clicking that and typing it. Let's zoom in. And what we can do is we can actually just go through here and really closely go around your ears. So your ears are kind of like your landmark when you're placing your haircut. All right, you can go around and really slowly kind of get the gist of everything. This is gonna take patience. The slower you go, the closer you can get to your face, which is going to make um, a little bit easier to put on the hairstyles as you go. Okay, but essentially you just want to erase everything except for your face. If you have hair on top of your head or some sort of all this stuff, you can actually go in and you wanna make it so that your head is as round as you can get it. So it's like you'd have a shaved head. So something like that. Um, you can go in and edit, you can use make use of the back and the redo and undo buttons. That's essentially what you wanna do and you wanna erase the background so that all you're left with is a head. So that's, what, that's how you can get your face into the game without having to use Photoshop or another program like that. Um, okay, so we're gonna use, the, what I've got in here is I've got my face. We're gonna use that one going forward. And the biggest thing is that once we've got it all erased, we wanna convert it to a vector so we can then move it around um, and do things like that. So again, you wanna make sure it's resized with the same size that you want it going forward so it's not too big within your screen. So once we've created our sprite and we've got our main head to work with, we can get rid of, we can get out of the costume and we can start doing some coding. The idea with this is that we don't want our head to move and we don't want to accidentally move it around when we're adding hairstyles to it. So what we have to do is we have to lock it in place. We lock it into position. So to start off, we're going to go over to events. So whenever we're coding, we have to start with um, a block that doesn't have anything on top of it. So it needs to have an event to start the code, a starting point. So these are all in yellow here. They have this blob at the top. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the one that says when backdrop switches to barbershop. And whatever you've named your main inside scene, that's what you want it to. And you can change the drop down to whatever it is there. Okay, so we want when the, block, the backdrop switches to barbershop, we want to lock that head in that same position and not let it move when we click it. So to do that, we have to go over to our motion tab. So we can physically move it, we can click and drag our face to where we want it, so right in the middle, and it's actually gonna change the coordinates of where it sits in that frame. So you just wanna drag it to where you want it to be, and then we're gonna pick this, go to X, this value, Y, this value. We're gonna pick it up, we're gonna drag it and drop it in here. We're also gonna then put it in, go over to sensing, and this is gonna go set drag mode to, and then we're gonna drop down to not draggable. So that means when it changes to this screen, it's gonna put it to that position from wherever it was before, and it's going to keep it there and not be able to move. The other thing we're gonna add in is we're gonna go up to look, so the purple blocks, and the show and the hide blocks are gonna be something that we're gonna use quite often in this code. So what we're gonna do is we're going to show it right at, at the bottom there, okay? Or right at the top, wherever you want. It's not gonna matter too much in this block sequence. We're good to go here, but we need some hair. So what we have to do is we have to go in where we've gotta make more sprites and more hairstyles that we can add on. So again, just like we made our face, we're going to go in and we're gonna make a new sprite. So choose a sprite. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna upload sprite or you can draw your own if you wanna make a mohawk or some crazy hair that I don't have saved, you can do that as well. But I've got some, a whole bunch of haircut pictures. So in your file that you downloaded, there's a hairstyles folder and it actually has a whole bunch of hairstyles that you can choose from. 
different colors, different styles. Okay, I've got a couple of beards. You want to have a beard. Um, but there's a whole bunch you can choose from here. You can go in and they're all uh, got no background. So it's just like a nice image that we can use. So, so I'm going to start and I'm going to choose hairstyle 14 as my first option here. If you can believe it, I've had this hairstyle before. So that's fun for everybody. Um, but so the, this is uh, the hairstyle we're going to start with. And you can see that I can move it around. I can still move my person, but it's always going to lock to that one spot. So don't worry about if you've moved your person from the original point. We've got, I've got my hairstyle. It's huge on my head. So we've got to make it fit my face. The way we're going to do that is we're going to go over to costumes again. You can see that we've just got our hair piece here. You can see that our hairstyle is selected. But what we want to do is first always convert to a vector. So now we can move it around. That's great. And what we want to do is we want to size it to the actual head that you're working with. So to do that, we can just go over to our head sprite, click our head. We can copy it, jump back over to our hairstyle, and then we're going to paste it in there. So now we've got these two things working together and they move as one, but we're just going to use that and then delete the face once we get the right size. So let's go in here and we know that hair goes on top of the head. So we're just going to move it uh, the different levels. Okay. So if we were clicking on our hair, we're going to click the front and it just pops it to the front layer there. So again, we can change it. We can resize it. We can do this. We can make it go like that. So if you've got a skinny head or a wide head or a tall head. You know, something like that. So that kind of looks, you know, decent. I don't think I'm ever going to have this hairstyle again, but you know, who knows? Okay. So I've got this hairstyle. It's the right size. I have manipulated it so that, you know, it fits right into my ears. I can't see any of my hair behind it. Looks great. Um, so what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to select the face. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to select the person and I'm just going to press delete and get rid of it there and work with our hairstyle. Now this hairstyle looks a little flat. It is just one color. So what you can actually do now is you can go in and you can add highlights. You can add, you know, if you want a purple streak or a green streak, it's up to you. So what we can do is we can zoom in a little bit here so that we've got a better view and go into this pen tool. So again, with hair and highlights, it's usually just off colors or offset colors. So to start off, if you want to get, we're just going to pick the color of the hair and then we're going to, I'm going to make this a little darker. So I'm just going to make it kind of a darker brown and change the brightness. So now that when we draw, I've got this line. When we're in a vector, we can then actually go in and select these lines and delete them or move them however you want. Okay. So just like when we were doing our eraser, we can change the size of the brush. So when we're working with really fine lines, so I'm going to work with actually just a three. Okay. And then we can zoom in. And so I'm going to add little highlights. So put a little line up there. I'm going to put a line down here and you can kind of see what the hair looks like. And it just gives it a little bit of texture, makes it look um, a little bit fancier to go with our live picture. Again, just play around with it. The undo, redo button is kind of your best friend in these situations. Ooh. But essentially, there you go. You've got some hair doing hair things. Okay, and it looks a little bit uh, nicer on my head than it did before. Spend a little bit of time and add in as many different hairstyles as you want. Create your own, find some on the internet, put some in there, do some eraser tools. World's your oyster. We're just going to first go in and add all of them into our area and customize them so that they have little highlights and things like that. All right. So I've gone ahead and added in my six different hairstyles and customized them to fit my face. So when they drag over my head, they fit. I've got some fun hair right there. Everything looks great. I've got some fun highlights on them, you know, lots of hair here, but all these hair styles are really big and they don't really fit on my screen. So what we're going to have to do is make them a little smaller so they fit on my wall of hair. So to do that, what we've got to do is we're going to work in our sprite kind of window here. So we're not going to be in the customize or the costumes tab. 
So we want to go back over to code. And so all we have to do to resize it here is this is the size is 100. So it's like 100% of its size. It's going to be the max there, kind of like a nice um, baseline. So what we're going to do is we're going to work in percentages. I'm going to scale mine down to 40%. So all I'm gonna do is on each one of my sprites of my hairdos, I'm gonna go over, click, type in 40, go over, click, type in 40, and you should see that my hairstyles are actually getting smaller um, and placed around, oh, not 400. 40, 40, and 40. So now I have these little hairstyles all over the place. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna arrange them in a way that you know, looks decent on the wall, the way I want them here. Looks great, we're gonna rearrange them. And so, now they're the right size for the wall, and we're gonna work later to make them the right size to go back to fit on my head. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that whenever we restart the game, that all the hair pieces go back onto the wall in this specific size and this specific space. So just like when we locked our face to that spot, we're gonna do almost the same thing. So we're gonna start off with just one of the hair sprites. So I'm gonna start off with my first one. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna be able to copy and paste the code so that we don't have to keep rewriting the code every hairstyle. So in our first one, so make sure that our head, our hairstyle is clicked. You can see it up in the top here. And we're gonna go on event. So just like when we had the barbershop where with the hair, we're gonna go when the backdrops, which is the barbershop, we're going to go up to looks. We're going to show it. We're going to set also in looks, we're going to set the size to 40%. Um, we can keep this show up there. So it's showing it, it's setting the size to 40%. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go up to motion and again, grab that, go to X, Y into that coordinate. So before we do that though, this is the block that's gonna repeat every single hairstyle. So all we're gonna do that we need to do to copy that is just click it, drag it. When we come over here, we see options of where to put it. So we're just gonna drag it into each one of them, just like this. And then that'll save us a bunch of time. So we're still in the first hair piece here. We're showing it, we're setting the size to 40%, so the same percentage that you put over here. And then we're just going to grab the position, so in our motion, um, and so that's gonna set it there when it switches. We're gonna jump over to our next hair piece. Okay, we can move these around. And again, you'll notice that these coordinates change depending on the sprite. So we just wanna make sure that they're all going to different spots rather than the one same spot, which is why we're adding this code block in after we copy and paste them and not before. Perfect. So now all of our hair pieces are in the same spot whenever we switch over to the barbershop inside background. We've gotten the hair pieces to stay on the wall and they're shrunk in size. But what we've got to do now is we've got to code each hair piece to get bigger whenever it jumps over and goes closer to my head. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use a if statement and when the sprite is clicked event. So an if statement is basically a condition so that if one scenario happens, a certain outcome goes. And if another scenario happens, the other scenario or the other outcome goes. Okay. And it'll make a little bit more sense as we work through it if you've never worked with loops before. So the way we're gonna work with this one is with our event, it's when the sprite is clicked, and then we're gonna go down to the orange and we're gonna use an if statement, an if then. There are a couple of them. So we're not looping forever, we're gonna do an if statement which is a conditional, and we're gonna use the if then else block. So it has two different kind of paths or options depending on um, what condition it's at. So we don't want the if then, we want the if then else. And we're gonna plop that in here. So we have to make our condition. So if the hair piece is on the wall, that's fine, it can be at the 40% as long as it's, but once it comes in contact with the head sprite, then we need to make sure that it goes back up to its original size. 
So we've got to go into our sensor. So it's got a sense on where it is on the screen. And we're going to go touching mouse pointer question mark. We're going to grab this block right here, pick it up, and it's going to go inside that if statement right there. We don't want the mouse pointer. We're actually going to do this drop down. And so if the sprite, which is our hair, is touching me with no hair, then something's going to happen. So we want the size to then get bigger. So we're going to go back up to looks. We're going to set the size to 100. Amazing. And if it's not touching my hair when we click, it's going to go back to 40. So now what we can do is we can test it out. So we were on this hair code. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to click it over my head and it's actually going to get bigger, which is great. That's what we want. And when I click it back over anywhere where it's not touching my head, it's going to remain at 40%. But if it's touching my head, it's going to go back to 100%. Simple as that. So, you know, again, that's pretty great, but when you're at, the hairdressers you get your hair done and it would be very unfortunate if you didn't like your hairstyle and you just came in and they gave you whatever they wanted to or how they were feeling that day so we need to have some interaction with users so we're going to add some text and a thought bubble so again if it's touching the hair and we put it on our head we want to say is that a good one do we like it so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a looks and it's going to say for two seconds or say hello. The difference between the two blocks is if we just say hello, it's going to stay there forever. If we say hello and then put a timer on it, it's going to pop up and then disappear, which is what we want. So we're going to go say hello for two seconds. We're going to grab this. We're going to put it inside this first one and we're going to type in, what do you think? Boom. And maybe let's put that for three seconds because it's a long couple of words. So now when I grab my hair, I'm going to jump over to here and I'm going to click it and it says, what do you think? And I'm going, yeah, it looks great. It looks what I'm going to look like in another month. So what, what we're going to do is that's great, but we want to say something when it gets put back on the wall. So let's add another one so that it says maybe something else for two seconds. So now that when I put it over my head and I put it on there, it asks me what I think, and when I put it back on the wall, it says maybe something else. So that is something that is very simple to do. We've done it for the one hair piece, and what we can do is we can then copy and paste it to the other hair pieces so we don't have to redo that every single time, but everything's better with sound. So uh, what we're going to do is we're, at, you didn't hear it in the first one, but we're actually gonna add sound in to these right now because we want some magical, you know, like when you put on a wig and it goes, oh, and then when you put it away, it's going to be uh, kind of a disappointed sound. So we're going to work with the sound tab now. So make sure that you're selected on each one of the hair pieces. So the hair piece you were just working on, we're going to jump over to the sound. And just like when we added a background, a sprite, we're going to do the same thing. But this time we're going to choose a sound where you can just click this button and it actually <laughs> You can spend a whole bunch of time trying to find the perfect sound. Uh, I've got some sounds that I've already been working with. So I've got a magical spell. So that's gonna happen when the hair piece goes on my head. And my disappoint disconnect is gonna happen when I put the hair piece back on the wall. So those are my two sound pieces here. I'm gonna jump back into the code and we're gonna go over to our sound. And just like before with the say hello, and say hello for three seconds, we have two different options for the sound blocks. When we do play sound magic spell until done, just like in a code, it reads one then the next and keeps going. If it plays the full sound and then moves on, it's gonna play this sound and then put the, then the hair is gonna grow. We want it all to happen at the same time. So we wanna choose the one that says start sound magic spell. That way it's gonna start the sound and the hair is gonna grow and be put on my head. So we're going to grab this one and we're going to plop it in just before here and same thing start sound when we put it back on the wall and what we're just going to do is we're going to do the drop down and find the two that we picked making sure that we do the correct one so when i grab my hair piece ta -da! 
and I put it back, maybe we don't like it. So simple as that. So now we've got hair that grows, hair that shrinks, hair that makes sounds, hair that wants to know what you think. All we're gonna do now is instead of having to do that for every single hair piece, all we have to do is copy and paste just like we did with the um, position. So again, just take it and drop it over to each one of them. And you'll notice when we jump into them that all the code is still there. We just might have to rearrange it. So again, we're just cycling through the sprite so it's a little easier to see. We've got all the code for the hair pieces in each one of the sprite workspaces, but let's test it out and see what happens. So let's grab the one we had before. Looks great. Sounds working. Okay, but what if I grab this one? I pick it up. Oh, I don't hear. I don't hear any sound. So what we actually have to do is because each one of them has their own sound library, we have to go in and add the sound to each one of the hairstyles as well. So that's the one uh, kind of downside to having multiple sprites and using sounds is that when I'm in my original hair piece that we did, our sound library is there, we've got the two. But if I jump over to another one, I don't have any sound. So we do have to actually put them in the library so that Scratch knows where to pull them from. So if you know your name, again, you can just type it in so you don't have to keep looking. So we're gonna grab a magic spell and we're gonna grab disconnect all right so now that means when I grab this my sounds are working perfect so I've gone ahead and done that in each one of our hair pieces here so we are ready to go okay so now if I want to test it out fully I'm going to jump over here I'm gonna make it full screen I'm gonna press the green flag and I should be able to grab all my hair pieces and know that I will never have some of these haircuts um, again or ever. But it's fun to, fun to see it, you know? Um, to test it out, that's the point of the game. But at this point, we've got two backdrops that we haven't used, so we've gotta figure out how to do that because right now, this was a pretty simple piece of code, but we're gonna actually do add some buttons and change the backdrop so we have a little bit of flow to our to our game here. We're going to go back out of here. Uh, we're going to press our green flag. Um, and I want this to restart. So I've moved all these hair pieces around. Uh, we've given them a position where to go to, but I don't actually have any way of getting them back to that spot. To add in the new scene, all we have to do is go back over to the stages and click that. And you'll notice that instead of costumes it says backdrops. So what we want to do is we actually want to, on the green flag, we want to start with the opening of the store, the front of the store. So when the green flag is clicked, we want to, we're going to scroll up to looks. And in this one, we've got switch the backdrop to a certain one, with one of our three pictures. So we don't want the barbershop. We want to go to the salon front. So when the green flag is clicked, we're going to switch to the, the salon front, which means now I've got this, I've changed my backdrop. But I've got all these hair pieces and my face. I don't want them. So what we've got to do is we've actually got to go in and we've got to make sure that they're hidden when the green flag is clicked. So we're going to go in here, we're going to go into our events, we're going to click each one of our hair sprites as well as the face sprite. And we're going to go when the green flag is clicked, we're going to hide it. So again, we only need to do it once. The next, we just have to drag it into each one of the hair pieces and we should be good to go. So now when I press the green flag, it should be hidden, um, but we have no way of getting inside the barbershop. So we've got to add a button, which means we've got to add another sprite. So that's all the button is. What we're going to do is we're going to add a sprite here and this time we're just going to choose a sprite from one of the pre-made ones. You can see that there's lots of different things to choose from, so if you wanted to, you could make the button um, a green flag or a heart or a chicken or a hedgehog. <laughs> they are actually pre-made buttons. So I am going to start with button number two and you can see that I now have this sprite on the screen. So we want to make sure that we only see this sprite when the green flag is clicked, which means We've got, when the green flag is clicked, we want to show. When the backdrop changes to barbershop, 
we want to hide. And eventually, when the backdrop switches to the runway, we also want it to be hidden. Okay? To get into the part where we see the barbershop background again, we've got to customize this button. So we're going to go into costumes, and again, we've got these two colors, and you can choose whichever color you want. You can change the color. We're going to add some text. I'm going to make my text white so it pops. And all I'm going to do here is click, and I'm going to go come in. So now I've got my button. We're going to put our button right up at the top here. Uh, we're going to go back to our code. And just like before, when the sprite is clicked, so when the button is clicked, we want the backdrop to change. So we're going to go into our looks. We're going to uh, switch the backdrop. And again, choose the one we want. We want barbershop. And then we're good to go. Which means we can test it out. So we're going to press the green flag. We're going to press the come in. And we're back. So all of these things came back. Because if you remember, when we clicked on the hairpiece, we started it as when the backdrop switches to barbershop, which is what we just had it done, is it showed up, it went to 40%, and it went to that spot on the wall. Which is exactly what we want. So then we can go in and everything should remain the same. Ta-da! and all that good stuff, okay? So now we've got our hairstyle, we've picked it out, we know which one we wanna do, we've gotta get out of the shop and we've gotta go on the runway and strut our stuff or strut your stuff on the beach or wherever you put your last backdrop. So what we've gotta do is we've gotta make another button. So same thing, we're gonna go in, we're gonna choose a sprite, this time I'm gonna choose this one, go into costumes, put in some text and go all done, move it around so it fits in there nicely. Um, we can actually change the size of the button too. So if it's too big or too tall or too short. Here we go. So we've got a nice button. We're gonna put it right up in the top as well. Go back to the code. Again, we have to figure out when we wanna see it, when we don't wanna see it. So under events, when the flag is clicked and we're in the front of the store, we do not wanna see it. So we wanna hide it. When we're in the barbershop, we want to see it. So we want to show it. And when we are in the uh, runway, we want to hide it. Perfect. Now, what's the button gonna do when we press on it? We're gonna go to events. We're gonna go when the sprite is clicked. We're going to change the backdrop to the runway. Awesome, let's test it out. We're at our hair salon, we're gonna press come on in. We've got our hairstyles, looks great. Now I've got choosing long hair, you know, the summer locks, and then we're gonna press all done, and I'm on the runway. Except so are all these hair pieces. We don't want that. So what we want is we wanna be able to say, if the hair piece is touching the head, it's gonna stay visible. But if it's not touching the head, it's gonna be hidden when it changes over to the runway backdrop. So again, we're gonna use an if statement, an if else statement, just like we've done when we moved the hair around. So let's go back to this main page here. And so we're gonna jump onto our first hair piece. We're gonna go over to events. This event is when the backdrop switches to runway we're gonna have another if statement. So go down to controls, an if then else statement. Okay, we're gonna go back to sensors. Same one we used before, so touching mouse pointer, except we're going to make it no hair. So whatever our sprite is called, that is our face. So if it's touching our hair, we want to basically just go over to our looks. We wanna see it. And if it's not, we wanna hide it. And that's pretty much it. So now we've got it in here, we've got the if statement to say that if the hairpiece is touching my head, it's gonna show up. If it's not, it's gonna disappear. And we want to make sure this happens for all of our hair pieces. So again, we're gonna take this, we're gonna copy it, and we're just gonna pull it over to each one of the hair sprites. Looks great. And we're gonna test it out. We'll make it full screen, because we should almost be finished. We've got a hair salon, come on in. Choose our hairstyle, oh yeah. Rocker style. Maybe let's choose. 
Yeah. Looks great. Let's try it. We're going to press all done. And now the rest of my hair pieces went away. The one that I wanted stays and I'm strutting my stuff on the runway and everything is awesome. And that's it. You've made your very own homemade barbershop or hair salon to see which new looks you're going to be sporting in the new season. If you're working online, you can actually make your own Scratch account and then you can save your work so that you can go back and work on it on different times. If you're working on your computer, you can actually download and save the file so that you can pick it up next time. So in order to do that, all we're going to do is we're just going to jump up to the top. You're going to press file, save to your computer, choose a spot where you want it, and we're going to go new hairdos. We're going to save that. And so now it's on your computer. It's the same thing with your online. You're just going to go up to file and save to my computer so that when you go to load it, all you have to do is go file, load from your computer, find that file, and you're good to go. And you can continue where you left off. And that's it. I hope that you enjoyed. Again, I'm Steph for Destination Exploration and our Technology Thursday posts. Share with me what crazy hairstyles you decided to put on your Sprite and what crazy hairstyles you're wearing right now. Until next week, we'll see you then.